So again, the big picture, we're trying to link macroeconomics and asset pricing, in particular write down economic models to help us understand why in recessions or bad times, stock prices fall, expected returns rise. We've looked at the power utility function. We saw two ways of generalizing that utility function, uh, habits and recursive utility. We then looked at two ways of, of generalizing the market structure, getting rid of the perfect uh, the equality of, of everyone's utility function or the perfect insurance. Now let's look at the production side. We certainly want to tie asset returns to the investment, to the decisions of firms, and that's got to be a part of our grand picture that we're, we're trying to build to. So we'll do that through the Q theory of investment. The Q theory is to uh, the production side, the simple textbook model that power utility is to the consumption side. Uh, we're going to write down the problem of a firm. The firm wants to maximize its value, which is the discounted value of its future profits. And it chooses investment to do that. If it invests more, it gets more capital, but capital depreciates. One final wrinkle, though, is that there are adjustment costs to investment. Uh, on the day that they are repainting your office and putting a new computer in, you're not going to get a lot of work done. That means that when investment is higher, other things equal, Today's profits are low, but of course it gives you more capital stock, which you can use tomorrow. So our job, find the optimal investment to solve that problem. It turns out not to be that hard. You can think it through. Uh, if you increase investment a little bit, you lose today's profits. But if you increase investment today, you get a little more capital. And uh, so what you want to do is put, uh, invest to the point where the marginal cost of investing today equals the marginal value uh, of the extra capital. Now, this is a constant returns to scale uh, production function, so that the uh, marginal increase in value when you have more capital is the same as the average, uh, V over K, which in, uh, in macroeconomics that's called Q, in finance it's called the market to book ratio. So we end up with a beautiful, simple prediction for investment. When stock prices are high relative to book value, when the cost of capital is low, when discount rates are low, uh, firms should invest a lot, and vice versa when, when prices are low. Now, it's, it's an R squared equals 1 theory. <laughs> uh, investment should be exactly equal to Q. But nonetheless, what we do see in the data is that higher investment corresponds to higher stock prices. And I'll show you that in a moment. Next, uh, a lot of the, the, the uh, things that we've looked at involve around returns. So we need to look at returns, uh, the first difference version of this Q theory. Now, returns, dr, is just the change in value plus uh, the, the profit. That's the change in price plus the dividend stream. We know uh, how value, this is just the Q theory relationship. Uh, and therefore, uh, a little bit of algebra later, we can find that the return is related to investment today and tomorrow. Or in discrete time, returns our investment to invest, uh, return investment today and tomorrow. Now, these are kind of ugly formulas until you've worked for them for a while, but think about what they say. One plus alpha I over K, that was, this is today's price, and that's tomorrow's price. So what we're seeing is that prices grow when investment is growing. So what these formulas are really doing is just first differencing the Q theory idea. They're saying that market values grow over time with a big return, when investment is growing over time from IT to IT plus one. It's not as pretty a form as just something to the gamma, but that's really what it's telling us. Returns are high when you go from a period of low investment, a period of low prices, a period of low adjustment costs, to a period of high prices, high investment, or high adjustment costs. So there's predictions we can look at in the data. This return, which is a market return, that's a return that we see in asset pricing data, the theory says should be equal to the return on investment. This is the physical rate of return. I pour a dollar into this company. How many dollars can I take out of that company tomorrow? That should equal the stock market return. That's the, that's the prediction we're going to look at. And hence, expected returns on both sides should be equal. So the plots here, uh, there's a quick slide of algebra, um, which you can look at at your leisure. I, it, it was small enough to fit in the slide. I won't go through it now. Uh, but let's look at how it works. These plots are from a paper I wrote long ago, uh, the first paper on the topic, uh, but they still show the basic idea. Uh, the black line is the stock return. The dashed line is the investment return. The theory says they're supposed to be exactly equal, but of course, no theories are perfect. 
Uh, especially, and, and there's a danger in Q theory of rejecting the Q theory. You can always reject any theory that has an R squared equals one. The interesting thing is, is how much of the glass is full. And notice that the stock return and investment return are very highly correlated, uh, which is a fact you know. When, when stock prices are high, firms invest like crazy. And conversely, in recessions, when stock prices are low, firms aren't investing. So that correlation is there in the data. Second, uh, the, if the exposed returns are equal, the expected returns are equal. So I ran a regression of return on the standard forecasting variables. Do, if we try to forecast the stock return by the standard forecasting variables and the investment return by the standard forecasting variables, do the results look the same? And the answer is by and large, yes. 0 0.16 here, 0 0.10 there, 0 0.35 there, 0 0.16 there. Uh, uh, the rough patterns are the same. The dividend yield doesn't work out quite so well, but all the other ones works fairly well. And we can summarize that point with, this is a plot of the expected return, the right-hand side of the regression of stock return or investment return. So one is just a function of investment growth. One's a function of stock, one is the stock return. Forecast that using the vector variables, plot the forecasts, and notice that those two things are correlated. So you can see at least the beginning signs of the idea that stock returns over the business cycle are correlated with producers' decisions, with investment growth, as this very simple model uh, says they should. Here's an update uh, taken from the discount rates, uh, uh, from the discount rates paper, uh, where I showed you the price-dividend ratio and the market-to-book ratio, first through the boom of the 1990s, then the doldrums of the 2000s, and then the financial crisis. So what this theory says is the investment to capital ratio should track the market to book ratio or Q. Investment high when stock prices are high, investment low when stock prices are low. And you can see exactly that's what's going on. When stock prices are high, investment was huge in the boom. Uh, when the boom ended in the 1990s, investment went down. The doldrums of the 2000s, and of course in the financial crisis, stock prices fell like a stone, investment fell like a stone. Uh, things are working pretty much uh, just as they should. So moral, Q theory, in fact, works pretty well. Investment does respond to risk premiums. Investment doesn't respond well to risk interest rates, and that's where macroeconomics got the sense that Q theory didn't work, as well as rejecting the R squared equals one prediction. But investment responds to risk premiums. And what we learn here is that the business cycle is a lot about risk premiums, not so much about interest rates. The same patterns holding the cross section uh, a, a bunch of papers on the reading list will show you how uh, high growth firms, firms with high book to market ratios at any point in time, invest a lot more than low book to market ratio firms, and how many asset pricing return puzzles in the cross section of returns line up with investment. Uh, there's a challenge, of course. This is a Q theory is very simple. It doesn't allow producers to transfer output across states of nature. That's one of the big challenges left here. The second big challenge is, of course, general equilibrium. Producers seem to be doing roughly the right thing. There's a bunch of different ways we can see consumers to be doing the right thing. What we really need is to put that in, in, a, in a grand model where there are exogenous shocks. Both producers and consumers are doing the things they should. We will jointly understand asset pricing and recessions when we're all done. I, I don't need to tell you that project is, is uh, at least underway, and that leaves plenty for you to do in, in this exciting area of research. Thank you.